Ministry of Foreign Affairs, members of the Board of Management of the Lakshman Kadri Gama Institute, officers of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, our distinguished panel for this afternoon, Mr. Nakandala, Admiral Kolumbage, Mr. Fernando, Dr. Veera Kuhn, Dr. Vignaraja, Dr. Pandit Ratna, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening and welcome. First, I must apologize for our delay in starting time due to unexpected circumstances. Before we begin this evening's dialogue, may I please ask you to kindly put your mobile phones on silent. I would also like to inform you that this landmark event today will be live streamed on our YouTube page, therefore available to those beyond this audience. Um, could I please now invite Dr. Dinusha Panditharatna, our executive director, to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Divya. Uh, excellencies, as speakers, members of the Board of Management, uh, officers of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we are delighted today to welcome our keynote speaker, Mrs. Grace Asiwadan, State Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, as well as our expert panelists, Admiral Kolomogay, Mr. Fernando, Mr. Narkandala, and Dr. Weerakorn, <laughs> whose session will be moderated today by the chair of LKI's Global Economy Program, Dr. Wignaraja. Before I introduce today's keynote speaker, I would like to mention that this is a new and exciting type of dialogue for LKI. We've had the good fortune to partner many times with the foreign ministry to share expert views from outside the country, including the views of the UN Secretary General, Prime Ministers and Foreign Ministers. We are equally, if not more appreciative for the opportunity to partner with the foreign ministry today in sharing national and local perspectives on foreign policy, both for the ministry itself, as well as from our other vantage points in Sri Lanka's public, <coughs> private, and non-governmental sectors. Sri Lanka's upcoming chairmanship of BIMSEC provides an excellent impetus to begin this type of nationally grounded analysis to strengthen Sri Lanka's foreign policy in a specific and tangible way. And I'm sure our speakers today will provide excellent ideas on how to achieve this. I have the pleasure now of introducing our keynote speaker, Mrs. Grace Asiwadam assumed duties as the State Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs recently in October 2017. And we're excited to have you here to make one of your first major addresses as State Secretary. Prior to this appointment, Mrs. Asiwadam served as Ambassador to the Netherlands and Nepal, as well as in Sri Lanka's missions in Germany and Pakistan. She was accredited to the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons in The Hague as permanent representative of Sri Lanka, during which time she also served as Deputy Director General of the same organization for four years. In her long and distinguished career in Sri Lanka's diplomatic service, Mrs. Asiwadam has held several other positions in Sri Lanka's foreign ministry, most recently as additional secretary of Economic Affairs and Trade, the Middle East and Africa, Political Affairs West. Mrs. Asiwadam previously also served as Director General of South Asia and SARC in the Foreign Ministry. Mrs. Asiwadam, I have the pleasure of now inviting you to the podium to make your keynote address on the development and future of BIMSEC. this historic occasion of the 20th anniversary of the Bay of Bengal <laughs> initiative for multi-sectoral technical and economic cooperation, the BIMSTEC, I'm privileged to deliver the keynote address to a distinguished gathering here. BIMSTEC took shape at a time when the concept of regionalism was gaining momentum. World economic developments and the resurgence of Asia as the economic powerhouse 
with the emergence of China and India as engines of growth, accentuated the importance of South Asia and Southeast Asia for economic integration in Asia. BIMSTEC means connectivity, engagement, and prosperity. It is widely regarded as a product of convergence of India's Act East policy and Thailand's Look West policy. It is also a natural affiliation between SARC and ASEAN. Further, it is said the BIMSTEC combines the Bay of Bengal and the Himalayas and these fertile thoughts and assumptions signpost the enormous potential that the BIMSTEC has to realize as a sub-regional bloc. BIMSTEC has entered its third decade of journey in realizing its objectives. Relatively young compared to other organizations and arrangements in Asia, BIMSTEC is striving to achieve its full potential for which the member countries support and cooperation is, cru is a crucial prerequisite. BIMSTEC was established by seven member countries, namely Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Myanmar, Bhutan, and Nepal to work together to optimize their capabilities, competencies, and resources with a result to develop the economies and eventually achieve the lofty goal of a Bay of Bengal economic community. The objectives of the sub-regional initiative under the Bank of Declaration were to create an enabling environment for rapid economic development of the sub-region, encourage the spirit of equality and partnership, and promote active collaboration and mutual assistance in the areas of common interest of the member countries. BIMSTEC initially focused on six priority areas, and now it has 14 priority areas, <coughs> namely trade and investment, transport and communication, energy, tourism, technology, fisheries, agriculture, public health, poverty elevation, counterterrorism, and transnational crime, environment, and natural disaster management, culture, people-to-people -people contact, and cl climate change. It is felt the higher number of priority areas in focus may have hindered the progress of BIMSTEC. Of these, the areas such as trade and investment, connectivity and people-to-people -people relations require utmost attention and focus in terms of policy, infrastructure, funding, and an overall coordinated action by BIMSTEC. BIMSTEC has come, a, come of age in a relatively short period. Although the progress that had it achieved during the last 20 years was modest, it evolved over the years, withstanding all odds, including lack of interest, lack of commitment, political tensions, political instability, dissimilar developmental uh, status of member countries, and their varied expectations. Regardless of the fact that the membership of BIMSTEC is diverse, comprising developing countries, uh, de fast developing countries, and uh, least developed countries, together as a sub-regional body, a sub-regional bloc, it, is, it has macroeconomic strengths. BIMSTEC is an opportunity for pooling of the complementary strengths of South Asia and Southeast Asia. BIMSTEC is home to 1.5 billion people, which is 21% of the world population, with a collective GDP of US dollars, 2.85 trillion, and an average economic growth of 6.5%. And the intra-regional trade is US dollars, 77 billion. Further, it has substantial untapped natural resources and human resources, which are most essential for mutual cooperation and prosperity. Sri Lanka held the chairmanship of BIMSTEC 
from 2002 to 2003, during which period the importance of political commitment of the member countries was underlined for promoting more intensified sub-regional cooperation. Sri Lanka is yet again going to be the chair of BIMSTEC next year after the fifth summit of BIMSTEC leaders in Nepal. The occasion of the 20th, 20th anniversary provides us an opportunity to take stock of achievements and failures and to chart a way forward. It is also important in the context of Sri Lanka's impending chairmanship, chairmanship to deliberate on injecting new dynamism and introducing added vitality for making it more competent to fulfill the objectives of it. As BIMSTEC is a membership-driven membership organization, it is important for the chair country to be active, providing robust leadership to implement the decisions and create interest and uh, a good momentum in the organization. It should also adopt a theme to focus during its chairmanship. Sri Lanka should endeavor to provide outstanding leadership and add impetus to BIMSTEC during its upcoming chairmanship. In order to sustain the commitment of member countries to the progress in BIMSTEC, it may be crucial to adapt a Troika system comprising current chair, former chair, and future chair of BIMSTEC who will work together to ensure the organization is on track of progress. The arrangement will strengthen the leadership within the organization, compelling all members to demonstrate their commitment through cooperation. Unlike in other regional organizations, BIMSTEC declaration has not provided for partnering with non-member countries and organizations such as observers or dialogue partners who could contribute to the advancement of the objectives of BIMSTEC by means of contribution of funds, funding special projects, capacity building, sharing knowledge and expertise, and other assistance. Such arrangements are normal and extremely useful, if used properly. This will bridge the resource gap in the region. In this regard, cooperation and engagement with regional and international financial institutions is also vital. 20 years have passed since BIMSTEC's declaration was adopted. Considering the extensive transformation which has taken place in the region, as well as the impact of globalization on the member countries, there, there is a need to revisit the declaration to make it more relevant, coherent, and strong in policy and structure, incorporating the present requirements and the aspirations of the member countries. BIMSTEC should also actively engage in outreach activities together with member countries to gain from similar organizations, increase its capacity by interacting with the UN agencies, international and regional organizations on subject or issue basis. Gaining visibility in the international arena is necessary for a growing sub-regional organization which can be achieved through obtaining observer status in the United Nations General Assembly and other regional organizations. Such an arrangement will elevate the status of BIMSTEC, which will in turn bring forth benefits by way of recognition, financial assistance, expert assistance, market access, etc. BIMSTEC has a network of policy think tanks, which is tasked to deliberate on the strategy for promotion of connectivity and people to people contact. It would also be beneficial to have track 1.5 and track 2 forums for dialogue on all issues in focus under BIMSTEC. This will help the organization to brainstorm on opportunities and challenges for regional cooperation and to develop analytical views on current issues related to priority areas, technological advancements, policy changes, and to plan and tackle emerging situations at both regional and global levels. BIMSTEC should also engage in effective public diplomacy in order to create awareness in the member countries on BIMSTEC to reach out to the people 
in the sub-region. BIMSEC took almost 17 years to establish a permanent mission, permanent secretariat. It was expected that the coordination and implementation support by the secretariat would introduce new robustness into the organization for accelerating the benefits of, the of cooperation. The creation of secretariat was seen as a breakthrough in BIMSTEC. However, the effectiveness will depend on member countries' unfaltering commitment towards BIMSTEC. In the meantime, the sluggish BIMSTEC received a, a surprise shot in the arm when India decided to introduce BIMSTEC in, to BRICS during its turn to host BRICS summit in India, which was held in Goa in 2016. It was also a decision by India to increase its focus on BIMSTEC due to the shared pessimism in the progress of SARC due to bilateral conflicts. At the BIMSTEC retreat in Goa, the leaders pledged to make BIMSTEC stronger, more effective, and result-oriented. They also agreed on an action agenda to achieve greater connectivity and promote investment, trade, people-to-people -people contact, and sustainable use of resources. India has hosted many activities and provided leadership under several priority areas. However, the current renewed interest of India in BIMSTEC is a blessing in disguise in the setting of troubled politics in South Asia. Needless to say, India's leadership, leadership is of paramount importance to BIMSTEC. The senior officials meeting and the ministerial meeting held in Kathmandu in August 2017 witnessed India's exceptional keenness to impart a fresh dynamism into all areas of cooperation under BIMSTEC. At this meeting, the Indian External Affairs Minister Shushma Subaraj said in her address, I quote, for India, BIMSTEC is a natural choice to fulfill our key foreign policy priorities of neighborhood first and act east, unquote. She also said that BIMSTEC is a natural platform to build our common future. Being the largest economy in this BIMSTEC, India becomes the natural leader to this block to steer it to success. This enthusiasm is much required for the sustained progress in BIMSTEC. The Goa summit was a timely event to revitalize the weary BIMSTEC. As regards trade, it may be noted that the intra-BIMSTEC trade has grown marginally from 3.6% in 2002 to 4.3% in 2014. However, the full potential of intra-trade, intra-regional trade remains unexploited owing to tariff and non-tariff barriers and lack of other enabling conditions. The much talked about subject in BIMSTEC was the long pending free trade area, FTA. A framework agreement for establishing BIMSTEC free trade area was signed after seven years of intense negotiations, including four rounds of ministerial meetings from 1997 to 2004. BIMSTEC already spent another 13 years on drafting the FTA agreement, which is yet to be realized. Since 2004 to 2016, around 20 rounds of meetings were held under the Trade Negotiating Committee. Several deadlines were missed, and the timeline set to submit negative list and trade liberalization schemes were not observed. During the recent leaders' retreat in Goa, it was agreed to expedite finalization of the FTA. However, the Trade Negotiating Committee meeting has not taken place so far, apparently due to scheduling pro problems. The emergence of a web of FTAs at sub-regional and bilateral levels reflect, reflects the increasing appetite in the region for intense economic integration. The BIMSTEC members have already entered into bilateral and regional free trade agreements and arrangements in the region. ASEAN FTA, ASEAN India FTA, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, ASEAN India Comprehensive Economic Partnership, SAFTA, APTA, and India's bilateral FTAs with Sri Lanka, Bhutan, Nepal, and also uh, the ongoing negotiation on ETCA, 
and also the FTA India is negotiating with Thailand. These are arrangements already in place or underway, and it is very important for us to work together uh, in order to conclude the BIMSTEC FTA, in order to have a single community-related FTA. The ongoing discussion on the trade facilitation agreement to formulate a legal framework to deepen and broaden cooperation in cross-border trade facilitation among the member countries will complement the FTA and boost up the overall cooperation in trade and economic activities. Also, the proposed BIMSTEC FTA is to cover not only trade in goods, but also investment and services. The understanding is to first work on trade in goods and gradually progress into accommodating investment and services. Already the first phase of the process was prolonged for 13 years, and it is obvious that negotiations to follow on the investment and services will be even more difficult. Given the symmetrical status of industrialization, economic development, geographical location, policy factors, foreign direct investment prospects, logistic performance, quality infrastructure, and other enabling ground situation in the member countries. BIMSTEC is designed to promote sectoral cooperation, which is being achieved through regional projects, projects to bridge the developmental gap and nurture economic integration. BIMSTEC should focus on developing projects in the field of transport connectivity and trade-related infrastructure to create an enabling platform for intra-regional trade and investment. This will also reinforce FTA negotiations process. Connectivity is also crucial for the growth in cooperation under BIMSTEC and it is the essential building block for regional integration arrangement. Enhancing connectivity has been the focus at all three summits in the past, and the recent Goa summit uh, retreat by Sri Lanka uh, BIMSTEC leaders. In the retreat, the outcome document, the BIMSTEC leaders recognized connectivity as the key promoter of regional integration and agreed to continue to promote all modes of transport linkages. Thailand is drawing up a BIMSTEC master plan on connectivity with a view to create a seamless and multi-dimensional connectivity, including hardware, software, people-to-people -people contact, and digital connectivity for the betterment of the region. BIMSTEC Transport Infrastructure Logistics Study, funded by ADB, identified various short and long-term transport connectivity projects to be undertaken in the BIMSTEC region, which will cost around 45 to $50 billion. Investment on infrastructure should be promoted. BIMSTEC should consider creating a develop, development fund for such uh, infra infrastructure development and other special projects. It is also important to strengthen public-private partnership cooperation among customs authorities, immigration authorities, ports authorities, financial institutions, shipping industry, bis business communities, civil societies, academia, etc., for realizing an actual functioning connectivity through people-to-people -people contact. BIMSTEC should also make maximum use of newly created connectivity infrastructure by India under the Act East policy. Further, the various bilateral and regional connectivity infrastructure being created in the region, including the Asian Highway and the various Asian Development Bank project should be synchronized with connectivity plans of BIMSTEC. Technology has become an integral part of our daily life. It is one of the core priority areas promoting science and technology for the benefit of industry and commerce. Sri Lanka is the lead country for technology sector in BIMSTEC. It was proposed to set up a BIMSTEC technology transfer facility. It was proposed to set up uh, in 2008 and a concept paper was submitted in 2011. And technological advancement in the region will make a qualitative change in the regional cooperation. Therefore, Sri Lanka, together with the member countries, should expedite setting up of this facility to enhance cooperation in technology among member countries. 
in the globalization process, energy security is crucial for countries without exception. The Beamstech region is endowed with large gas reserves and hydropower potential. Beamstech is focused on cooperation in the energy sector to tap these resources for development, distribution, and efficient utilization for promotion of energy, tr uh, energy trade and investment, suitable regulatory framework should be established to make it more market driven and effective. In the field of electricity, BIMSTEC has progressed to finalize an MOU on establishing a trans-grid connectivity, connecting all the grids of BIMSTEC member countries and also focusing on other energy resources. BIMSTEC has not focused on Indian Ocean enough yet. Indian Ocean is a cross-cutting issue, relevant to all 14 priority areas of cooperation. BIMSTEC need, needs to deliberate on creating a mechanism for promoting cooperation in the field of Indian Ocean maritime safety and security. It may also create links with IORA, International Maritime Organization, and other relevant institutions in this field for ex exchange of information, best practices, and complementing implementation aspects. Littoral countries in the Indian Ocean region are focusing on blue economy in order to gain economic benefits from the Indian Ocean in a systematic and coordinated manner in a, as a community. The BIMSTEC leaders during the Goa retreat agreed to deepen cooperation in the development of blue economy for promoting sustainable development in the BIMSTEC region. To achieve the desired sub-regional cooperation, it is essential to have peace and security in the region. Efforts are taken to tackle traditional and non-traditional security challenges confronted by the region. In this regard, BIMSTEC member countries have concluded convention on anti-terrorism. Further efforts are being made to conclude a convention on mutual legal assistance in criminal matters. BIMSTEC, BIMSTEC which is at the 20th milestone anniversary, should be appreciated for the achievements. Sincere efforts need to be made to improve policies, strategies, structure, work procedures, infrastructure, etc., to strengthen cooperation. We are in an Asian century. South Asia and Southeast Asia are well positioned to reap the benefits of the shift of global economic epicenter towards Asia and the rapid economic transformation taking place in Asia. To be compatible and competitive in the Asian century, BIMSTEC should focus on the, mo on the most essential requisites of the current decade, which are wide-ranging physical connectivity, instit institutional connectivity, trade facilitation, infrastructure, free trade area, and economic integration. These measures will inevitably promote people-to-people -people contact in the region. Finally, I believe the member countries understand the strengths and weaknesses of BIMSTEC. They are aware of the huge potentials available for cooperation. They are also aware of the multitude challenges confronted by BIMSTEC to achieve regional integration. We expect new vigor and added quality in the practical measures being taken in the third decade of cooperation in BIMSTEC through enhanced partnership, collaboration, and the much needed commitment. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mrs. Thank you, Mrs. Asirvadam, for that extremely insightful insight on, BIM, on BIMSTEC. Um, it's with great pleasure that I now invite our distinguished panelists to the stage. Mr. Sumit Nakandala, First Secretary General of BIMSTEC. Dr. Ad, uh, Admiral Dr. Jayanath Kolomage, former commander of the Sri Lanka Navy. Mr. Shiran Fernando, Chief Economist at the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce. Dr. Dushni Virakun. Executive Director at the Institute of Policy Studies, and of course our moderator for this evening, Dr. Ganeshan Vigneraja, Chair of LKI's Global Economy Program. Please.
gentlemen, I think you will all agree that we've had a really nice entree to think of BIMSTEC with the priorities in the next period. And the purpose of this panel discussion is to do a little bit of a stock taking. We have a fascinating panel here and also to think maybe a little harder on some of the details of these priorities. Um, so what, what we're going to try to do with this panel is to deal with three overarching questions. We're going to try to look at the potential for regional cooperation and integration through this interesting configuration of seven or so countries. Second, we're going to try to get a sense of the strengths and weaknesses of this grouping, which is a bit of an unusual grouping, and there are strengths and weaknesses. Third, we're going to think a little bit about what are some of the measures by which this grouping um, may go forward uh, in a constructive manner during Sri Lanka's chairmanship of BIMSTEC in 2018 and indeed beyond. And to answer these, we have a really nice panel of colleagues. Uh, we have Mr. Sumit Narkandala, who is additional secretary at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the first secretary general of uh, BIMSTEC. Uh, we have Admiral Dr. Jailat Kolumbage, who was former Navy commander of Sri Lanka and many other hats, I should say. Uh, we have Shiran Fernando, who is Chief Economist at the Chamber of Commerce, and we have Dr. Dushni Viraku, who is Executive Director of the IPS. What I propose is each of them will speak for about four to five minutes with some initial thoughts, and then we'll try to have some sort of interaction uh, between themselves and the panel and with yourselves. Um, I think we'll start with Mr. Narkandala, please. Thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Vidyan Raja. Thank you for inviting me, uh, Elka uh, Institute for this important uh, meeting. In fact, uh, there are certain things that I can share and there are certain things I cannot share because being the first Secretary General, it is the most difficult task uh, anybody would have. But I am equally uh, happy to see um, uh, former Foreign Secretary and uh, our Ambassador to Bangkok, Mr. Pariyakara here in the audience because he was part of the BIMSTEC uh, process uh, when the Secretariat was not there. We had a very vibrant uh, Bangkok-based uh, BIMSTEC working group, which was actually coordinating all activities. Uh, and they also conducted, and, uh, conducted two, uh, two BIMSTEC summits in 2004 and 2008. And the third summit was held in 2014. Now, uh, I think uh, uh, the, the, the keynote speech was uh, really elaborative. Uh, uh, Mrs. Ashirwadham has covered uh, many things. But um, uh, BIMSTEC for me, of course, I may be a bit uh, biased in, in, in the whole exposition because uh, if you say, somebody says BIMSTEC was an unusual grouping, I don't think so because uh, I would like to go back to little historical aspects and saying the, the Bay of Bengal was, was connecting South Asia, especially Coromandel Coast, to Southeast Asia. And uh, I would recommend you to read uh, one of the best books written by Sunil S. Amrit, Crossing the Bay of Bengal. And in fact, there were mentioned about BIMSTEC uh, specifically, whether bureaucratic-led uh, BIMSTEC could succeed. Uh, that's a question that, uh, in fact, Mrs. Ashirwadham also raised in, uh, in between. Now, for me, BIMSTEC was a natural phenomena, as uh, was stated uh, at the, the, during the keynote uh, speech. Uh, it's, a, it's a natural connectivity between South Asia and Southeast Asia. And uh, the key uh, component for me is the presence of uh, Myanmar. In fact, Myanmar is the, is the, is the key uh, connecting uh, landmass. Unless otherwise, the Bay of Bengal, which is part of the larger South Indian Ocean, is the real connecting factor. Um, I'm not going into, into uh, much of the details, but I just want to thought of uh, sharing this. When I took over uh, BIMSTEC as uh, the first Secretary General, um, uh, apart from the, uh, the logistics and then administrative matters, uh, my problem was, uh, I think, uh, 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 Foreign Secretary, uh, Mr. Palihakar will also uh, agree with me. Uh, how do I get the largest country and the, and the most powerful member in the group interested in 
region cooperation and regional integration process through BIMSTEC. Now, it took one, one year for me to get India interested in the whole process. Of course, there were certain other things which, uh, which was stated in the, uh, in the uh, keynote, uh, lack of interest and the pr problems within uh, SARC uh, also contributed to that. When I heard that uh, BRICS, uh, uh, BRICS BIMSTEC outreach summit is taking place, uh, I had to consult Delhi and I asked one hour retreat. Actually, that retreat produced many things. The outcome document which was referred to by, during, uh, by, by Mrs. Ashirwadan. Now, most of the elements in the outcome document was made inside the secretariat. Most of the things, except few uh, which the Honorable Prime Minister of India brought, uh, which, which, are, which were related basically to uh, uh, terrorism and radicalization and the connectivity. So I think uh, this was the, the evolution. I mean, the most important, if you ask what has happened during the last uh, 20 years, I think uh, the establishment of the Secretariat is, is one, of the, one of the most important uh, 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 landmarks that we have achieved during the last 20 years. The other one is the uh, India's uh, renewed interest commitment, uh, not only the financial commitment, but, uh, but, but what, what, what I would like to say is the political commitment out of the necessity that India would lead uh, because uh, uh, India's leadership is utmost important. That is what we, uh, what we see today. India is leading the process and uh, it is not peculiar to BIMSTEC. If you see all other regional organizations, take, it, take ASEAN, take EU, take any, any regional organization, we need a leader to lead. Without a lead country, actual leadership, no regional organization will uh, succeed. So that's, that was uh, my approach to uh, BIMSTEC, which I'm, I'm happy that India uh, is in the leadership uh, role and uh, personal commitment of uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi is also important. I think this is how I, I see uh, BIMSTEC. The other um, important things, uh, of course, later we, we can contribute, uh, we can discuss about the uh, FTA. Uh, yes, uh, I also would like to bring one important thing. When uh, SARC was established in 1985, economic cooperation was not on the agenda. But uh, in contrast to BIM, uh, SARC, BIMSTEC was established in 1997. By 1998, economic cooperation was discussed. This was, in fact, uh, uh, this was because the push and the commitment given by then uh, Thai Prime Minister Thaksin Sinawatra. That was a crucial thing. What happened thereafter, there were changes in, in, uh, in Thailand. Uh, democratic governance was not there. So the interest of uh, Thailand in BIMSTEC uh, got little diluted. But now it, it is there, renewed uh, interest is there. So this is uh, the situation then. If you believe that uh, overnight regional integration and regional cooperation can be achieved, I think that is uh, an illusion. Uh, when, when coal and steel community was started in the uh, 50s, none of the founding fathers thought that coal and steel community would end up with a political union. So what they did was they utilized the windows of opportunities which were uh, comparable and uh, complementary to the, their national interest. This is how it has happened. I think, Ganesh, you, you have worked in, uh, in, uh, extensively in ASEAN issues. The same story can be applied there. So uh, in BIMSTEC, uh, uh, as uh, keynote speaker said, uh, we need to be patient. And uh, Sri Lanka will have a, have a definite role to play during uh, that chairmanship to take uh, BIMSTEC uh, into next logical, uh, logical level. Uh, certainly, we have done a number of things uh, in terms of uh, in terms of trade, uh, connectivity, uh, BIMSTEC master plan, uh, we are doing that. But I think one of, the, one of the other important aspects which happened during the last one year was the meeting of uh, national security advisors of um, uh, uh, member states, which is, which is, uh, which is important. 
uh, aspect and uh, they have uh, termed and recognized Bay of Bengal as a common security space. Uh, uh, Admiral will, will deal with that a little later when he uh, will be explaining uh, his uh, uh, at, uh, aspects into the, the Bay of Bengal. Uh, I am a very uh, optimistic uh, observer in regional cooperation and integration. Mm -hmm. So I would say, yes, uh, Beamstech will succeed because it is a natural phenomenon, uh, which, which is coming from the historical uh, con legacy and connectivity. People to people contacts, migration, the ideas uh, migrated across the Bay of Bengal, people migrated across the Bay, uh, Bay of Bengal, civilizations have, so uh, this has to succeed. Not today, maybe not uh, in, the, in the next uh, uh, two, three years, but certainly it will succeed. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that very nice overview of your aspirations and where you thought Beamstech was going. Emiral Kolomagi, would you talk to us a little bit about the maritime story of Beamstech, which people think is important, and also some of the security aspects, particularly non-security, uh, non-traditional security threats? Thank you, as it's great to be with the LKI, and always you do things novel way, and I'm so happy to be part of your programs. And uh, thank you for the kind invitation. When you look at the BIMSTEC, there are two common things in the BIMSTEC. One is Bay of Bengal. The other one is part of ASEAN. And what is common to BIMSTEC? Whether it is FTA, we are yet to go there. But there is one particular aspect which is common to BIMSTEC, that is the ocean. Basically, the Indian Ocean, when America sees the Indian Ocean and Pacific together, we, in the Indian Ocean, divide it into two. We divide it to Western Indian Ocean and the Bay of Bengal. Right now, in the whole world, the Bay of Bengal Ocean region is relatively peaceful, relatively calm, no disputes, no maritime disputes. So there is potential for us to make use of that calmness in the Bay of Bengal. And also another very important aspect of Bay of Bengal is it is the connector to the Western Pacific Ocean. Whatever is happening in the Western Pacific Ocean in South China Sea and the East China Sea, we are not immune from that. We see it quite uh, in our day-to-day -day discussion that it is always referred to China's assertive behavior in the South China Sea. So we are not <laughs> immune from that. However, I believe, I'm not going to talk about FTA when there are many economists here, but I think the maritime security aspect of it is very easy to reap the benefits of the maritime security aspect because it is the common most denominator for all our countries. Now, we are not the most developed region in the world, and we are developing economically, and that economic development is taking place across the ocean. And we need to maintain this ocean in a peaceful, harmonious manner. I can describe this ocean in six words. That is, this is the Bay of Bengal region, is a region of strategic competition, strategic convergence, and strategic dilemma. Strategic competition for large powers. Strategic convergence, some large powers against another large power or two. The strategic dilemma for smaller countries like Sri Lanka, who are sandwiched, who are forced to choose between these large powers. So we have a dilemma, dilemma situation as well. Now, this competition is not very helpful to the, to the region. And therefore, we need some mechanism where all the players who are present in the Bay of Bengal commit ourselves to behave like good kids, right? We need a rule-based maritime order where the freedom of navigation and, of course, freedom of overfly, or in other words, I can say the freedom of maritime commerce is taking place. Now, how do we achieve that? I think BIMSTEC can, right now BIMSTEC is focusing, BIMSTEC never focused on security until recently, maybe the Goa summit as a result of that. Now we are focusing on the BIMSTEC. 
the security in the BIM stake. So BIM stake can have a mechanism to maintain the status quo, the peaceful environment of the Bay of Bengal. Now, unlike the Atlantic or the Pacific Ocean, the Bay of Bengal has many non-state actors. There are terrorists waiting to explore. There are radical uh, elements here. There are pirates, possibly. There are illegal fishers here. So there are many non-state actors in the Bay of Bengal also. So we need to accommodate the state versus state rivalry and the presence of non-state actors into a security mechanism. And I would argue Sri Lanka, rightly, I think we have been given the chair to discuss about safety and security. And we, being in the best strategic location in the Indian Ocean, and also we are unique. There are two countries in this region which has a part in the Western Indian Ocean and the other part in the Bay of Bengal. That's India and Sri Lanka. So by being in this geographically advantageous location, Sri Lanka can play a key role in designing, in creating, and in contributing to a new security structure. Our Prime Minister has been talking about a code of conduct. That's kind of a taboo word for most of our Indian friends. They don't like that word at all. But then we can talk about a new Indian Ocean order. So we need to address this issue un unless there will be the situation will fare up. This is the heaviest, most militarized ocean also, the Bay of Bengal. If I give you one figure, from 2009 to 2017, 398 warships have visited Port of Colombo. Well, that's a good figure because we do a lot of business, we make money, but that also means how militarized our region is. Now, that is what we see. What about the nuclear submarines carrying nuclear weapons? They are all around us. So we are practically sitting on a volcano waiting to erupt. Should there be an accident, we will be in trouble. Should there be a war among the nuclear rivals, we'll be in trouble. So therefore, I think BIMSTEC, we need a regional security structure, new regional security order, and I think BIMSTEC is one. But having said that, I also wish that BIMSTEC do not replicate the work of the others. Like IORA, for example. Now, we are the chair, I mean, we were given the chair. And IONS, for example, right? So we should not have too much duplication as well. We must reinforce our commitment to security. So I think I will stop it at this moment and then wait for other questions later on. Thank you. Shiran, I wonder if you can tell us what the private sector thinks of all of this. Is it just a fad that's led by government and military, or is there a private sector role in all of this? Uh, so let me first thank KI and uh, for inviting uh, me to be on this panel and, and to represent the private sector views. So an interesting point, I think. Um, I think if you, if we, for example, shot out a survey to our members um, asking, you know, about BIMSTEC viewpoints, we probably not get um, too much of a reply uh, because there might not be too much of an understanding of this re region and this block. So I think um, I'll leave it my commitment commits to probably three points, and my first point is on that, the fact that within Sri Lanka and and then within the private sector, I think given what's going on with um, SARC and maybe other blocks and the discussions surrounding that, maybe BIMSTEC is not getting that due prominence and that's an area of concern, but which needs to be sort of maybe, uh, since, uh, since we're sort of taking on the uh, chairmanship, we could uh, bring that more into light. So I think that's one area where we can sort of uh, focus on and the private sector can be more engaged in it. In particular, I think with the discussions on the FTA, uh, on the regional FTA, engagement on that could bolster not only the FTA discussions, but also bolster what BIMSTEC is trying to do on energy, on, uh, on the naval, on security, things like that. So that could be other complementary things that come with it. The other thing I think from the private sector's point of view and something um, Sri Lanka sort of going on with its reform process is, um, is a lot of its own bilateral FTAs. Um, there is one with Singapore on the cards, India, um, one with China, one proposed with Thailand, Bangladesh, and these are certain members even with BIMSTEC. So how do we sort of complement these efforts? I think these have to be linked together without uh, it being it, uh, sort of having a duplication as, as, uh, as, as Admiral sort of pointed out as well. So 
those things need to be coordinated within within the block. Otherwise, we'll sort of not go anywhere, and this discussion will continue on. And I think for Sri Lanka as a priority, I think it's important to get the bilateral things done first. And that will sort of give a better signal when we sort of go out to do these regional uh, FTAs as well. So it so, so, sort of should complement it. And even on the investment side, I think we're sort of seeing uh, in interest from the region as well. Thailand is uh, a big a big company that I sort of looking to set up an industrial park um, in Kalutara. So a lot of activity around that. How can BIMSTEC sort of facilitate more of that, um, be an enabler for that, would I think then sort of bring about uh, a bit more, uh, bit more of a purpose and a bit more of a meaning to the private sector. And I think the last one I want to maybe highlight on is on the connectivity side. Uh, the region as a whole is quite weak in terms of uh, getting into the global value chains, weak in terms of research and development, and that's an area I think the region as a whole um, and uh, a topic that can be discussed uh, both bilaterally within the region, within um, chambers of commerce and other institutions to sort of improve on that. How can collectively they can go, in on, and go on it while sort of looking at things like trade facilitation and the like. So. I'll just leave my initial comments to those three areas. Right. Um, I'm going to touch on BIMSTEC from more of the economic um, point of view. There is so much talk about um, untapped potential, and this is something that um, is not peculiar only to BIMSTEC, but it's also uh, when we talk about SARC, again, the conversation is untapped um, potential. Now, both these two um, groupings decided to focus on FTAs around the same time in 2004. And as we heard today from the keynote speech, um, BIMSTEC has not even finalized it. Um, SARC did get its SAFTA agreement through, but again, a very limited um, trade agreement. I remember the time that um, the BIMSTEC FTA was spoken of. It was seen as almost um, ahead of um, the SAFTA process because they had decided to include services, investment. Um, and to really compare BIMSTEC um, to SARC and not find that it has not lived up to even um, that limited um, set of expectation, I think is, is tells a lot that it has been um, as an organization meeting for the last 20 years, but not being able to get anything um, off the ground. Um, again, I think in the keynote speech, we heard that there is renewed um, interest in BIMSTEC. Again, it's, it comes down to politics. In 2016, um, I think India decided to invite BIMSTEC into the BRICS meeting as a means of sidelining SARC particularly um, uh, in, 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 in some quarters. Uh, it is argued as a means of um, sidelining uh, Pakistan uh, in, in the um, South Asian regional integration uh, process. So today, if you look at the problems of um, SARC, they seem to be much more complex uh, and li likely to drag on and as a sort of a reflection of that, then you can say, yes, BIMSTEC, BIMSTEC uh, looks a little more promising. But it has its own strengths, its own weaknesses. To me, at least South Asia has a common uh, commonality of um, there is certain commitment that you know everybody wants to retain the South Asian identity. The disintegration of SARC is not going to be um, something that uh, is uh, commonly accepted. But BIMSTEC, seven countries that are members, um, there is no co-binding factor that holds them together. And I think to a large extent, when you look at the 14 areas of cooperation, um, the wide agenda that it's uh, attempting to do, even while it has not managed to complete a FTA negotiation, um, is telling us that it is a 
a better option for BIMSTEC, I think, to narrow its areas of cooperation and if it is to retain its relevance, then get a binding agreement done. And for me, the question of um, Sri Lanka's um, chairmanship next year came up. I think the only thing that Sri Lanka can deliver is to get that FTA done. And I'm not saying that simply because I'm an economist. I don't think that that uh, FTA is going to deliver much in terms of uh, increasing trade. Many of the BIMSTEC countries have access to each other's markets through other agreements, bilateral and other regional agreements. But it is at least a sign of political leadership and commitment that the seven member countries are willing to sign on to an agreement um, that you can then build on uh, in years to come, in including services and investment. There is, I think, some debate that um, some of the member countries, particularly India, wants to issue that it's taken us 14 years to even negotiate a very basic um, FTA. If you open it up, it doesn't, uh, I don't think the outlook is going to be um, quite as positive. Let's not forget Bangladesh and Myanmar uh, will also have political distractions there over the refugee um, crisis in the coming years. So for me, Sri Lanka's um, leadership is to deliver on that FTA, but that FTA is not going to lead to much um, increase in trade. Um, but there was also the agreement on trade facilitation that was um, spoken of. And um, if that's combined with something on customs, I think we would have achieved quite a bit in that one year. Thank you. Um, we've now had a fascinating sort of set of perspectives on BIMSTEC's future and what our wish list is for Sri Lanka. I'm going to try to pose a question to each of the panelists to kind of get the conversation going. Um, to Mr. Nakandala, um, what's so special about India deciding to introduce BIMSTEC to BRICS in Goa in 2016? And how, how really can the small countries um, kind of navigate the waters of this giant India successfully? Uh, being a carrier foreign service officer, I will have certain limitations to answer, <laughs> frankly, so that I will have to use my, all my diplomatic skills uh, to do so. Uh, but uh, Ganesh, um, uh, uh, in fact, uh, I mean, the, what I have seen in, in BIMSTEC for the last three years, uh, the, the, the individual ideas, you know, when India decided that uh, BRICS, during the BRICS summit, uh, there was a tradition to invite a regional organization uh, as outreach. So uh, uh, Indian South Bloc, of course, Minister of External Affairs, uh, uh, some of the people inside, uh, they were debating who to invite. Uh, but th that suggestion came from outside, in fact, which I know, uh, certainly. Uh, Suggestion came from outside, uh, outside, of course, within India, but outside the External Affairs Ministry, and that uh, idea was uh, was uh, accepted uh, by the Indian political leadership. In fact, some of the some of the uh, the ideas in the action plan. In fact, I would, uh, I mean, I, I don't want to be to become more more personalized, but I think the BIMSTEC Secretariat, uh, since the inception, had had very good friends like uh, uh, someone Kalegama. Prabir De, uh, Surat Horachaikul, um, and then a whole force of my friends. I mean, they, they contributed. These were the ideas that came and then finally accepted by the political leadership uh, uh, during the process. So uh, India's, uh, in, in, I, I think India had, uh, India wanted to get involved with uh, East Asia, uh, to do business with East Asia. That is why, in fact, uh, um, the initial enthusiasm uh, India exhibited towards uh, um, form forming BIMSTEC as a, that time it was a BISTEC. Mm -hmm. When they, they formed the organization in 1997, it was uh, Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka, Thailand, economic cooperation. But later when the other Myanmar, then uh, Bhutan and Nepal joined, then we had to expand the name uh, to current one. Bay of Bengal initiative uh, for technical and economic cooperation. So India always had this desire, how do we uh, in, uh, uh, 
secure market access uh, towards uh, uh, East, East, East Asia. So this is the one. Now, they, had one, uh, they, they, they have one thing through, through northeast of India. But northeast of India, the connectivity is very, very difficult. Now they are focusing, the current uh, government in Delhi, they are focusing on how to develop the connectivity to, through uh, northeast uh, of uh, India to, towards uh, Myanmar and then uh, rest of Southeast Asia. In fact, there is a trilateral highway, um, uh, India, um, Myanmar, and Thailand trilateral highway, it is happening. And Bay of Bengal Growth Corridor, which is basically funded by, uh, by Japan, is happening. So a number of things are happening in, in the, in, within the Indian Ocean, as uh, I, I think uh, Admiral was focusing on, on the strategic issue. But I think there is a strategic uh, interface between strategic issues, interest, and then trade and investment issues. I'll stop by saying one thing, because uh, there were references to FTA. We had a golden opportunity in 2011. We agreed on timeline. We agreed on exchange of uh, lists by this date, this date, this date. But one single country, one single country delayed till 2014. That country su submitted the list November 15, 2014. Now, when we went to negotiating table uh, with the 20th TNC, uh, the Indian delegation said, yes, we were ready to sign in 2011. Hmm. Now things have changed. So we, uh, they didn't ask uh, us to go back to uh, framework agreement. They had questions about the uh, PSR, uh, some PSR, product specific, uh, specific, uh, 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 product -specific uh, matters. So that was the problem. That is how the, uh, in 2015, the BIMSTEC FTA uh, could not be um, finalized. So it was a very sad occasion where I had to uh, personally witness that and I tried to negotiate with two countries. So uh, I, I think it was uh, uh, that, that particular country, member state, I'm not uh, going to name, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, that, uh, that country should, uh, should <laughs> own that. And that was, that we had the golden opportunity. Everybody was ready. Because by that time, India didn't have a FTA with ASEAN. It was after uh, uh, that uh, India had uh, uh, India farm, uh, come, uh, had a FTA with uh, ASEAN. Now India is uh, negotiating with RCEP. So India has lots of uh, avenues. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, Admiral I have two questions for you using two different hats of yours. Um, the first is one has to ask about the elephant in the room. Okay. <laughs> yes. So um, we think of these initiatives like BIMSTEC in isolation. But in fact, um, you know, the critical question for all of us is how will the BIMSTEC process interact with the BRI? That's the first question. The second question is something that is probably closer to your previous job, which is what are some of the impediments to promoting better cooperation on organized crime, drug trafficking, et cetera, in the region, and how should we solve them? Yeah, I think uh, elephant in the room is there. Only thing we pretend we don't see it <laughs> and, uh, but it's there, pretty much filling the room. And I think many of the initiatives, to be very frank, India is taking, the objective is, one objective is to counter China. Whether it is the rev revival of BIMSTEC, whether it is Asia-Africa Growth Corridor, whether it is Neighborhood First, whether it is Look East Act East Policy, basically aimed at countering China's growing presence in the Indian Ocean. In that sense, I would argue India was maritime blind for a while. They were focusing more on the land because they have disputed borders with China, Pakistan, uh, so on, so on. So they were focusing more and they did not realize that a lot of things have happened in the Indian Ocean, in the Bay of Bengal, and then they woke up a little late. So now they are taking initiatives and uh, I think the neighborhood first policy is because they neglected the neighborhood largely, and now they want to focus on the neighborhood. When Narendra Modi was appointed prime minister, his first visit was to Sri Lanka, right? And then there's another project that they have, Sagar, security and growth for all in the region, right? So they also realized that unless we develop as a region, if you leave someone behind, that doesn't argue well for your region. 
But now the problem comes, now SAC is focusing on the SAC, I mean the whole of SAC, but we want to get, we, have, we want to have SAC minus two. That is to leave Pakistan and Afghanistan out, right? So that is the main reason why India is, to my understanding, focusing on the BIMSTEC now is basically to keep India up, to keep China out, and to bring in US, Japan, and Australia, right? Maybe I'm a little uh, harsh on, I'm not saying, but this is the strategic reality, right? There is a maritime Cold War taking place in the Bay of Bengal. There is an increased militarization of the countries. People are, countries are acquiring submarines. Take the example of Bangladesh, they are, they are acquiring submarines, right? And Sri Lanka is also on a naval uh, uh, expansion, right? Because of this mistrust, I mean, I would call this is a region of trust deficiency. And because of that, we need other security because we don't trust each other. We need other security, that is military security. And we spend so much of money buying, I mean, enhancing our military capability, whereas our people, I think 40% of SAC are living below the poverty line. 70% of people in India don't have access to toilets, but they are going to have four aircraft carriers, which is great, or do we really need it? That we can argue. So this is, my problem is, it is basically, is it for the right reason that we are paying, I mean, the re revival of BIMSTEC, is it for the right reason? Is it for the benefit of the people in the BIMSTEC, or is it purely to offset the influence of China? China is here, growing, India is here. Now, again, yesterday we had a discussion about uh, UNCLOS, right? So now UNCLOS basically means open seas. But we see in, our, in front of our own eyes, there is a competition between open seas and closed seas in the Bay of Bengal. You want open seas for some countries and closed seas for some. It doesn't work. It's not going to work. It is leading to conflict. Now that is my f f final point, the strategic dilemma that we smaller countries in, because some countries try to benefit from both, like Sri Lanka. Some countries hedge one against the other, right? So this is a situation. Only thing the FTA, I'm not, again, I'm not going to, add, but we are the least economically integrated region in the whole world. Not even our 5% of GDP is within the SARC region, right? If we are linked, economically more, I would say we would depend on each other more. We would uh, have more collaborative uh, mechanisms because we are dependent on each other economically, right? So I think, I don't think we can separate these issues, economical, diplomatic, uh, strategic. We have to look at in uh, uh, as a comprehensive approach for everything. And uh, okay, this very briefly, the second question. As I mentioned, unlike the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean, this area, there are a large number of non-state actors. You know, we know Sri Lanka suffered. We know Mumbai attacked 2611, right, across the ocean. And we know 40% of fishing taking place in the Indian Ocean is illegal. 40%. It's a ma major amount. And 57% of merchant vessels flying in the Indian Ocean do not report their position accurately. Not for uh, any other reason, but for commercial purposes. That means, we are maritime blind as a region. We don't see what is happening in the sea. We don't know what is happening in the sea. We don't know who's doing what and where. So how do we develop that? I think BIMSTEC can take that initiative to develop uh, some kind of a maritime domain awareness, to know what is happening at sea, to see who is there doing what, right? Because the non-state actors can play havoc in the Indian Ocean in the Bay of Bengal. We have seen it in Somali piracy. A small group of pirates, maybe 200, they took the entire world shipping into ransom. And a large number of naval vessels had to come in, private contracted security guard had to be on board. So much of effort was taken to battle against a very small group of pirates. So the presence of non-state actors, we cannot forget. It is large, so therefore, BIMSTEC like, I mean, uh, I think we are talking about the future of BIMSTEC, so they can discuss about how to tackle the issue of terrorism, basically not to allow any one country to do anything against another country. We have seen it here, that how BIMSTEC countries were exploited by uh, certain uh, terrorist groups, 
not small scale, a huge scale, unimaginable huge scale, the beamstack countries were exploited. It can happen again. So we need to put things on the table and we need to uh, come out with some confidence building measures to get rid of this trust deficiency that we have so much. And I think Madam mentioned that we need to think of uh, as South Asian, we are the last people think of any regionalism. I mean, we are like the Europeans think of as Europeans, but we never think of as South Asian. So I don't know what is the word we can use for bimstech Asians or whatever it is. So we need to think of some common feeling. Thank you. Um, Shiran, I have two specific questions for you. The first is, um, it seems that in our uh, chairmanship in 2018, Sri Lanka is going to drive this proposed BIMSTEC technology transfer facility to expand technology development amongst the big same countries and technology transfer. How do you see this best suiting the private sector in Sri Lanka and the rest? So that's the first question. Um, secondly, what about Thailand, Myanmar trade through BIMSTEC? We talk a lot about India. Is that much of a market for us? Do we care? Let me just answer the first, second question first. Um, so if you look in terms of um, our exports to the region, I think it's still stuck what it was quite a while back. So in 2012, if you look at it, um, about $780 million, $718 million of exports. 2016, if you look at it, a very similar amount. So we're not really growing in, in that market, and India is Indian market is probably the only market where we're sort of seeing a bit of growth uh, and not in the region. So clearly, we have to identify who the other players are that we need to grow in the region. Um, Thailand, I think, has been identified as a country where we could sort of go into maybe a possible FTA and, and links like that. And I think right now, a feasibility study is ongoing for such a FTA, so that's, that's in the works. Um, Myanmar, I think, will not probably need to take it through BIMSTEC. Maybe if we're sort of ne negotiating the agreement with India, maybe use that as a platform um, to get trade towards Myanmar uh, use, using India. So I mean, that, that's something that we could sort of maybe look at in, in the grand scheme of things. So those two markets, I think, are important, but we also need to understand what, we're, what products that we're sort of trying to get to those markets as well. In terms of the technology transfer facility, I mean, ICT um, exports, service exports in general, I think, is a key thrust area for the economy, for the private sector, and such a facility will sort of maybe help bring the region to some sort of uh, consolidation for, for technology. And if we sort of maybe um, at least have some sort of agreement or some sort of a thing in terms of improving connectivity, uh, given that Sri Lanka is doing quite well in terms of some of the numbers if, on, on the tech side, I think we'll be able to move this through. Uh, but given the priorities of the FTA, this, I'm not sure how much of focus we'll have. And also, the Sri Lanka's focus also with the bilateral FTAs and the other things it has committed to do next year as well, whether we'll have the focus to drive this and get it done. So question mark on, on that as well. Thank you very much. Um, Dushni, I have a couple of questions for you. Um, the first is, is on outward investment from Sri Lanka to India and to Thailand. Is there much prospect for this? And what holds it back? The second question is this issue of non-tariff measures that everyone says is increasing. And how does a small country like ours deal with it? Right. Um, on the issue of uh, outward investment, I think if you look at um, India, um, there is, uh, has been quite a shift um, of Sri Lankan investors going um, into the Indian market for, I think, a couple of reasons. One is, of course, that market access. Um, the second is related to labor costs. Um, production costs, etc., tends to be relatively cheaper, I gather. Um, Thailand, not quite um, so much. I would imagine that um, for Sri Lanka, the reverse of that is what we are looking for, to get more 
invert uh, investments from Thailand into um, uh, Sri Lanka. We already have uh, some amount of uh, uh, Indian investments um, coming in. Now, if you look at the India-Sri Lanka FTA, it does not touch on investment, but really the biggest um, change of in Sri Lanka and Indian economic relations over the last 10 years has been the volume of Indian investment coming in and now slowly um, Sri Lankan investors also um, going out there. So all of this has taken place without any formal agreements um, or any of these things <coughs> happening. Um, so again, it is a, a matter of the counterfactual. Could we reasonably argue that if we had a um, agreement on investment that the volumes would have been um, much greater than what we are seeing. Um, um, I do not know. I, I would uh, think that there is um, some merit in that argument because there, is, uh, there are certain clauses that get built into these agreements in terms of expropriation of uh, investments. Um, more clarity in terms of the uh, overall policy environment. And this is, I think, um, uh, Shiran would agree with me, one thing that investors have been complaining about, that the, there is no policy, uh, policy um, uh, uh, consistency to attract investors into Sri Lanka. So bilateral investment agreements built into FTAs um, perhaps give some degree of comfort. On um, NTBs, NTMs, um, if you look at um, the uh, BIMSTEC region, the FTA alone I don't think is going to generate much uh, expansion in trade because tariff levels are already quite low and there is market access through SAFTA and through bilateral FTAs um, for some of these countries. Um, what can change? The dynamics is if we do get a trade facilitation and customs clearance and these kinds of agreements um, that come in, um, but again, non-tariff measures, if you take uh, India, has been the biggest bugbear uh, for uh, Sri Lanka. And one of the strongest points on which uh, the private sector is resistant to the idea of um, opening up even more uh, through the ECTA agreement. So again, if the BIMSTEC uh, FTA isn't to go down that same route, uh, I think all these um, issues of uh, mutual recognition of standards and all those additional um, chapters that go into these trade agreements have to come in from the um, outset. Thank you very much. I think we have time for probably one round of questions. So maybe what would be good is if you'll raise your hand and if you could ask your question very uh, succinctly, if you want to give a comment, we'll have um, some refreshments later and you can certainly take any of the speakers and talk to them. And I will be quite strict because time is running out. So um, please, sir, if you can say who you are, that will be useful and keep your question short. That would be really great. We'll, we'll get your mic. Yeah. And then there was a gentleman there. And then um, we'll take three, four questions, and then I'll give you all a chance to take what you'll like, and then we'll, we'll wrap up. Thank you, Chair. My name is Laksuri Mendes. I worked in the CARICOM Secretariat several years, in 73 to, and also in 2008. And I saw how Caribbean community developed into a fully-fledged in the in the economic integration community in a short space of 35 years from a free trade agreement to a customs union, from a customs union to uh, one single economy. Today it is a single economy like the European Union, full of goods and services from countries and it is one, one country, one unit. Compared to that, so what's I, your question, what's question is, these, the BIMSTEC has a makings of a good regional organization. My mind, I this differ with you because 
There are a few challenges. That does not mean. No, but your question, sir. Question okay. is, uh, my question is that uh, uh, asking the panel, the, the panel, I would like to tell, to ask the panel whether uh, the slowness of getting into a certain targets should deter us from pursuing the goals defined in the opening charter. Because I think still there is some value in this organization compared to any other organization to which we are attached at the moment, SARC, or what you call the SARC, or any other thing. Thank you. This has the makings of a good regional organization to counterbalance India. There are five more sir, countries. Sir, thank you. Your question that is, is my question. Thank you. Um, gentlemen, please. Thank you. My name is Idanje. I'm a big data researcher with Learn Asia, and I'd like to present some data, if I may. No, and no, please, no data. Question. Um, question. Yeah, this, question. this is this please. is relevant to a question, uh, okay, because it, but very briefly and give us the question. Yes, it ends with the question, uh, because what I have seen in the SARC, if uh, if you look at the SARC, ASEAN and BIMSTEC blocks, SARC, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh. Uh, they form an extremely tight circle of social connectivity. Th these measures are weighted for popula population, of course. I can't describe that at the moment. Uh, so you have one very tight circle of social connectivity there. In ASEAN, you have extremely tight social connectivity between Indonesia and Malaysia, because these countries essentially acted as one before the 1814 uh, Anglo-Dutch Pact. Now, to on BIMSTEC, as Dr. Virakun pointed out, uh, you see two distinct communities. So what is, is your question? Sorry. My you, question you, is, oh, I need to explain the background before. Can you so just my question give us is, the question, please? There are two distinct communities that show up in social data. You have the Indian countries, you have India, the SARC countries headed that way, you have the ASEAN countries, and these, are, these two are widely split apart. So my question to the entire panel is, do you see this split economically? Do you see this split in the politics of BIMSTEC? If so, is there anything that can be done to reconcile it? But I suppose that will come at a future date. Do you see this split in terms of politics? And do you see the split economically? Thank you. Anybody else from this side? Please. My, my name is Malin Demigoda. I'm a researcher with the Lakshman Kadragam Institute. Uh, my question is, uh, there seems to be um, relatively little, little discussion about climate change uh, uh, in the recent BIMSTEC forums. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. And just, uh, I would like to know if there's any discussion of an action plan on to deal with this imp impending crisis. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Any last question from anybody? Great, why don't any of you wish, please. Uh, Chair, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, answer to that last question about uh, climate change. Um, we have 14 areas of cooperation. I think uh, uh, out of 14 areas, not all the areas are really functional because of certain uh, difficulties. One of the difficulties what we have uh, uh, in BIMSTEC is that we have a lead country concept. So each of these, uh, is, uh, these areas are led by a country. For example, trade and investment is led by uh, Bangladesh and transport and connectivity uh, communication is led by India. Climate change uh, was the latest addition and it is uh, led by uh, Bangladesh. So there was a suggestion uh, to host uh, a meeting, convene a meeting in 2015, but uh, for some reason it got postponed, postponed. I think this meeting will be now held uh, 28th and 29th of uh, uh, December uh, in, in Dhaka. So uh, th th this, is, this is the problem with, the, with BIMSTEC. So, uh, that meeting will decide a kind of uh, framework uh, uh, arrangement, cooperative pr framework arrangement, how to deal with uh, climate change. After all, we have to refer, uh, go in line with the Paris Agreement and all. So that's, uh, that's a kind of uh, dismal scenario we have in terms of uh, climate change. Thank you. Thank you. OK, um, very briefly, I think when we talk about connecting BIMSTEC or even for that matter SAC, I would like to use the word reconnect because my argument is 
we were very well connected before the European colonizing powers came into the region. We had trade. Now, India, I mean, occupied a very high position, like 27% of the world GDP was coming from India, right? So we were very well connected. Now, nearly 70 years after gaining independence, we are trying hard to reconnect. And it's not been very successful uh, issue, but we need to do that. We need to understand that we are trying to reconnect. And I mean, you mentioned about the cultural gap between the region and the, between uh, among the ASEAN. But then let's take Europe, for example. They fought bitter wars for hundreds of years. I mean, although they were culturally similar, uh, similar the World War I, World War II, but before that, they were really fighting, killing each other. But in the name of common good, they have joined together. Right now, European Union is talking about creating a European army. Right? So they have gone to that extent. Now, here we are, again, still least integrated. But I think there has to be a need. <coughs> and I would argue the political leadership is a must. Right? We need visionary, strong political leaders to make things happen in this region. So in that sense, I think we need to take stocks where we are now, especially if you take Sri Lanka, 70 years later after independence, right? Have we done the right thing? Have we come to the desired location or the position? If not, what should be our way forward? How do we combine with the region and rise as the rising tide? Sure. What's your question in terms of um the slow progress, I think that's a reflection. But if you look at forward, next five, 10 years, I think this topic itself is quite apt because we have, there has to be priorities set in place. I think in the past, maybe you can argue the case that there were too much being looked at. Right now, you have 14 areas that you're looking at. Maybe the priority should be on a few areas, get that done, and then show the relevancy of the region. I think India is sort of maybe, as highlighted in the panel, using it as a tool to sort of benefit uh, their interests. Sri Lanka could use this to benefit their interests in terms of uh, their trade interests, their hub interest. Um, and that itself could prove the relevance of BIMSTEC to Sri Lanka in its, in its own, and thereby maybe promote BIMSTEC for other countries to, to use uh, the platform. Um, just to add to that last point, um, I'm, there is relevance to BIMSTEC. I think when it was formed, it was seen as the way of connecting South Asia to Southeast Asia. Um, that roadmap got everybody excited. Um, but 20 years on, at least let's say now 14 years on since the negotiation started, we haven't got anywhere. And I keep hearing this um, examples that uh, European Union took so long, etc., and that we shouldn't be in too much of a hurry. But I think we also must keep in mind that um, times are changing and ideas and communication and, and the way that the world is interacting is changing very rapidly. Uh, and uh, for um, regional um, groupings that simply meet every year, talk, uh, and without much uh, to show for it, um, it's become irrelevant very, very soon unless uh, they get uh, some concrete um, agreements or some at least deliverables out of it. So to that extent, I think, um, yes, I agree, BIMSTEC has potential, but unless they do something about it, um, it is, it's going to be irrelevant um, in the long term. Gosh. So we had a very interesting discussion, and we started with three sort of questions. What's the potential on BIMSTEC? And I recall Mr. Narkandala telling us that it's baby steps, right? Uh, we've got to go slowly, um, and we follow the path of other organizations like ASEAN, and it will take time. Um, on the other hand, we had another colleague who said um, BIMSTEC um, may uh, be out of touch with what's going on elsewhere. So, so it's going to be a very interesting story. At the same time, we have the potential of BIMSTEC in terms of this large market. And as East Asia's growth eventually filters down from, China, from Japan to China to ASEAN, eventually it comes here and then be to the Indian Ocean and beyond, we've got an opportunity. Um, in terms of strengths, you've got this very large market. 
You've got the fact that we have a secretariat in BIMSTEC. I think that was one of the points you pointed out, and that's very useful. We have Indians' interest, uh, particularly after the BRICS summit. Um, so there seems some sort of momentum that we can build on. But as Admiral Kolumbage reminded us, there are these uh, security threats, um, which are a big problem, um, both in terms of traditional security threats. I think you said 300 and something naval visits to Sri Lanka alone, if I've got that right. Uh, piracy was another issue, um, and uh, the issue of illegal fishing. Uh, so we've got to think of rules that come around that, uh, that becomes critical. And then there's the elephant in the room uh, that you mentioned that is there. And uh, some people think of that strategic rivalry as an additional set of problems. Um, so there are indeed a lot of challenges. And then Shiran's point about the challenge of the private sector not knowing very much about BIMSTEC or what's the opportunity. So we've got to do a much better sell of the BIMSTEC to the private sector and why they should be bothered, right? I think that's the point you made. Um, so in terms of agenda, I think we have a lot for Sri Lanka's chairmanship. And the first point uh, my colleagues uh, probably uh, would agree on is that we've got to sell it better to the private sector, not just here, but across the countries in the region um, as to why they should really be concerned about BIMSTEC. Uh, we have the IT point and the technology transfer center, which would be very nice in an ICT sense from what I can gather. We've got to think about how putting flesh around that uh, perhaps Sri Lanka, India, Bangladesh, uh, et cetera, makes sense. Um, we've also got to think of um, hard infrastructure with the master plan that is available uh, for connectivity. And there is an MOU uh, for the transmission grid. Uh, this could be another agenda item. And as Dushni reminded us, if Sri Lanka can get the FTA done, that would be fabulous. So I think we have a large agenda there. Um, and uh, I think uh, Sri Lanka has a lot on its plate in terms of the chairmanship, and we have a fabulous team from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that I'm sure will take this agenda forward. So thank you very much. Uh, and of course to Ganeshan for his, as usual, superb uh, moderation of the issues. Thank you very much uh, to the team at the Ministry and also to the LKI team for their hard work and to all of you for uh, coming today. And may I invite you to join us for some refreshments outside. Thank you.